it very well this earlier session by saying yes, so everybody knows each other and we know what the strengths and weaknesses could in terms of from internationalization perspectives. Uh, also, when we started, uh, and I'm saying it more from uh, Jagu Lake City University, um, from, from our university perspectives, when we started, uh, honestly, and uh, so we thought that we were doing pretty well in terms of internationalization, in terms of things that we were trying to do. Uh, for many of my colleagues within the university, in fact, some very senior and profound uh, scholars as well, internationalization was getting limited to, and I'll let me tell you, it is more from a private sector university perspectives. Maybe public sector universities have a slightly different perspective because the ecosystem is slightly different. So for, for many of them, it was more of international students coming, admissions happening, few mobility scholars going here and there, some uh, research conferences and research papers being produced. And that's the end of it. And if you have more number of international students coming to you, or you have five more collaborations happening in terms of about 20 more MOUs happening, I think we are, any university would feel we are you know, placed at a very good stage. But going through this particular entire journey of Rishi, uh, we have actually been reflecting on ourselves where we are and what we are doing. I was extremely impressed in the morning when Anna Maria actually started with the stakeholders. The stakeholder definition itself at times becomes an issue. And I think that's where the entire focus of our efforts also go wrong. And this I'm seeing again from a perspective of JLU as well. So, so what we have done essentially is, and this is coming back from what, what we are trying to do today and from each other since we are trying to share. What exactly is we as JLU, we are looking, and, and we have already submitted this idea. But Anna Maria, I'll, I'll request it again. I think you would have, as a as a election or as a support document, there will be some more changes happening in the SIP. Because when we have submitted the internationalization strategy, there are a few more reflections happening, few more changes happening, and I think yesterday's conversations also would get into that particular strategy. So that's something which I said. So I said, what do we share right now? We have about 10 minutes or so. Uh, I said what, from our perspective, are actually the pillars part of it. So it's more of a reflection that I'm sharing with you because that's the basic imperative and genesis of our internationalization strategy. So one is we need to really start thinking which way the process we've already started to know who we actually are as a, as a university. What exactly is the strength areas, what exactly weak areas, what have been our experiences and those things. So there's a reflection which is happening at all levels across different departments. Uh, also, the possibilities that we are framing. We cannot be everywhere right up front because the big ideas and the big stuff that we may end up putting in there, uh, well, it would look very, very good. But would we be able to achieve it or is it achievable? So those are smart goals that everybody talks about, we are really putting it at test as far as our internationalization is concerned. Uh, we have about 20 odd uh, partnerships which go back for long more for 10 years. Some of them active and as the professor would have said it, some of them are there. Hello, hi, we keep on doing it once in a while but now much of our work has happened. So there is a reflection that there is a kind of analysis and audit happening for each of them as well with, with consent by the international partners. Obviously, we need to start understanding the moment because we say for ourselves that we are a student-centric university. Everything that we do, there is a lens of students or the learners, as we say. So what is that we do in internationalization which has to be transferred to the students in some form or other? We'll have to define it, but that's another layer that we want to do. And also, whether the systems that we have it, which have evolved a period of time, are they good enough to sustain what we're trying to plan? Because it is very possible that we may put up high ideas and suddenly after two years, three years, we start realizing we don't have the manpower and the kind of intellect which needs to carry the international strategy forward. So it has to go parallel, whether it is a teaching staff or the non-teaching staff. So these were some of the moments of reflection which is actually happening and these are, each has a tangible work tasks laid out for the teams which have been created internally across all different divisions. So this particular thought, and this is no great model which I have developed, but just a plotting of the thoughts which came to us. Uh, we really want, and this is something in the morning, I think Marcia uh, Professor Arjuna was talking about it. As a university, do we have the cognitive orientation towards internationalization? Because I think uh, somebody else also said the same thing. It means internationalization, even now in my university, means different things to different people. 
So what is that level of it that we have to build up? I think Professor Das was absolutely bang on when he said it's the spirit part of it which has to be kept in mind at the top most because I think uh, things happen in the world because of people, because of emotions, because of connects, because of faith. It does not happen only because of the processes. And especially in a context of education, everybody is a scholar, everybody has their own perspectives. So I think this cognitive part of it we are trying to decode for ourselves. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we have some point of time where we know what we have to do to get the to get the conversations with the disbelievers, if I may use the word, into the fold of internationalization. So that's something that we are <coughs> The second part, obviously, is the cultural tendencies. We come from Central India. Uh, Professor Das rightly said it. Central India, uh, some amazingly good national level institutions in Bhopal and Central India. But if we go beyond those national tutorial academies in the Institute of Forest Management, you find a lot of so far, a lot of very basic and average work also has happened across all universities. And it is no disrespect to anyone for us as well. So the idea is we have to see where exactly this culture tendencies lie, how do we see it. Across the entire thing is one part is obviously the culture part of and this again and when I say it is for our university. Cultural part of it, who's the staff, we are looking at the openness, whether they are open to this realization of internationalization. No matter how much Office of International Affairs and the Pro-Chancellor and the Vice-Chancellor and the Dean say it, eventually it has to be openness to doing everything and <coughs> openness from also from an institutional perspective of saying, okay, you want to inter internationalize, there is a Rishi Learnings, there are some great examples coming from Samitri Bhai, from Delhi University, from Madmas, you want to incorporate it as a part of your own learning, they should have you open. And obviously one is the industry, uh, industry and external partners, something which Asim was mentioning about. In our case, we have found out a lot of industry because the world is also moving with the industry and with the, with the I may use the word, community-based organizations, the corporates and everything else, how do they get into the picture? Uh, there is a regulatory mechanism uh, across education. Private universities are actually, uh, you know, actually have a more of a regulation to be honest enough. There are lots of things that you have to work with. There's a freedom as well, by the way. Content competencies collaborations part of Rishi we have gone through it. I think uh, we talked about yesterday the LOs and the processes pedagogy. That's where it would lie. We had a huge amount of work. We have done a lot of work, but certainly when I go back and I was listening to some of you when we chat among ourselves from the vice chancellor, we said we are maybe 40% there, not even 50%. As I said, in the morning, every minute the world is changing. The local dynamics have come to it where the new, new aspirations of a knowledge are coming. So we integrate as a part of LOs as well. I think some work about that is also happening. Something is reflected in our SIPs, but as I requested, this would get uh, further developed and, and what got populated. Pedagogy is the people the ideas and developmental. When I say developmental, it essentially means from a perspective of JDU because again we are in Central India. It's a state which is huge. Central India itself is huge. The dynamics is different. Uh, Professor Das said the biggest academy institutions in the country have in the main metros and the bigger towns and the next year towns. There's a different set of stakeholders, particularly from scholars and students coming up. Do we take and they all want to improve their lives? They all want to get into the industry. They all want to have the aspirations of getting McKinsey's and XYZ of the world. How do we integrate this developmental and quality of life perspective? And this essentially came from many people. So we have to take that into account. Uh, historical maturity, I have written it out here, is because we are 10 year old university. In fact, last year we celebrated our 10 years. In 10 years, if we have to pat ourselves on the back as a university, I think we have done pretty okay. But I think the next five years will become even more critical for us as a university. So our internationalization, whether it is IOC or the CI, has to incorporate that very, very clearly all together. And this is our job to take care of it, honestly. The pillars of our SIP uh, in the document which I reflected is that since I said it is a student perspective, the experiential part of it has to become extremely relevant. I cannot have a document, I cannot have an initiative which does not translate into something in a classroom or the off classroom. Also, one of the things that we have said it, if we have to be the thought leaders in our space, from an internationalization perspective, what is a benchmark that we are setting? We share our experiences, good ones, and we learn it from others. But do we have a benchmark that we have set it? Something that we did last year with Association of Universities in Asia Pacific, because fortunately for us, we have been part of it, and our chancellor actually is going to become the first president of it. So we said we will create a happy model. And a happy model is a very interesting thing. It's just called happy, H-A-P-P-I. 
and it actually stands for Headway Academic People, Process and Impact. It's just an abbreviation. But each of these pillars of happy are something which are going to actually define how exactly the collaboration across boundaries have to happen and it has been accepted by the AAD of the universities. And I think you want to say a quick line around that. Yeah, so this model is a, a quality uh, check parameter for the universities. So under their headway, we we have designed the themes like policy, mission, vision of the university and in academics we uh, define the, uh, the curriculum, the learning outcome, the program outcome, the methodology, pedagogy style comes under the academics and the people since the people is the most important part of any university. So what are the process, the structure of the organization, how the, 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 the cultures of the, and the entire which is designed for the employees comes in the people head way or the process and the impact. Now impact is very important how we measure the impact of any university. So the student progression, the career progression of the, of the students, the, the outcome and the employability and where your students goes and how, you know, when, when they pass out, the progress of the entire student comes under the impact uh, pillar. So this uh, happy model was recognized, uh, as I said, by the AUAP and is one of the parameters by which we can check the strength and the quality of any university. So that was... Yeah. Uh, and, and, and one more thing I would want to add, maybe I, I just missed it. Uh, you know, if we as a university, I, I'm emphasizing the point that where as a university we are based. In. So immediately we say, okay, we are relevant to all entire India is one part of it. Say. But the central India where a lot of things are already started to happen from an aspirational perspective. Uh, Madhya Pradesh as a state has 60 universities which the government has allowed. And out of that 60, many are private sector universities. Now, to be very honest, the number of scholars who are going to come into the universities is pretty large. Many of them may not be getting into the university, we do not know. And all these students, by the way, are not coming only from the metros. As Professor Das said, many are coming from smaller towns and rural parts of India. So if they are coming in as a university which is trying to internationalize at a level which Rishi actually has kind of inspired us to, how do I integrate this uh, a student or group of cohort of students who are coming from a smaller village near Dhopal where the university is? How do I incorporate? One aspect people say is what is the level of fees that you need to pay? Because internationalization was also bringing cost expenses. How do I integrate that? So I have to keep in mind that internationalization for those students in Central India need to have some bridges as well. You cannot just say, okay, I am going to get the best learning outcomes and this is what my pedagogy is, this is what the best cases are going to be shared across some European universities and maybe Delhi University. But how do I bridge it for the for the students who have come from a very, very small school in a rural India, which is there in Central India. So I think those are the issues that have been thinking about it and we've been plotting every time. And I think that's why I said yesterday when we were discussing over lunch about the learning outcomes and I think I love that idea of the first year when the new academics come into play. The first job they need to go through the hard yards is to create dialogues, to create the learning outcomes and pedagogy and the, like Pratimam has done it, the student guides to so I think that's a brilliant way of doing it, maybe that could definitely be incorporated as a part of our psyche and then we send it back to Anamaria to, to check if it fits in very well. Uh, uh, I would want to close on it, uh, uh, you have to say anything else, I mean I've just taken a very poor answer. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing, I think uh, uh, this is what we have said in our national dissemination seminar as well, that this is not the end, this is the beginning of internationalization and we, whatever the learnings that we have received and we have learned during this project, we'll try to implement it, we'll take it further. So now, uh, it, because uh, our, our good discussion has been done among the academic and the non-academic staff of our university and we are hoping that yes, we'll continue to, uh, you know, uh, have the flavor of internationalization in the classroom with the students because at the end of the day, that is very important when we talk about in academia, you know, how we are helping our students in becoming a global competence uh, students and how it is reflecting in our studies and in our curriculum and in our methodology and our pedagogy. So thank you so much. Thank we you. have everyone. also got, uh, say, the so JLU Office of International Affairs is also being restructured in a way uh, because we had to get in some more experts. Uh, we are trying to incorporate some people from the industry. Uh, one person from Tata has already you know, come on board in terms of another person.
person has also been given a partial responsibility of IQAC. The reason was only is that we wanted the IQAC to be closer to the internationalization strategy as well. Otherwise, we do many things, uh, but we will not be able to go to the, to the core part of it. I close on one of the things which is often said, and many of you, all of you are in fact scholars and researchers. One of the things which is often said for research globally is that many times research only informs. How many times does it actually enlighten us? Should enlighten. And that's why you know I like what Professor Das said and us in the morning you said it. You need to have that particular sense of spirit coming in. If that is there, believe in internationalization works and in all our cases success stories, it's a trust which is happening. So so thank you so much. I was happy with Dana Maria, Professor Badu and Asya when you set the tone for today. I'm very happy I'm taking along with Rinka, taking some of the stuff which uh, which would get into our strategy uh, and, and would be effective. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Um.